Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Stefan and today I'll continue to cover my Civic Steer Guide. Now if you haven't watched uh, the first part of this video, uh, please go ahead and do so in the top right corner. Uh, there's a link, but uh, the basics of it is that I have a tier list. Uh, all the Civics in the game are organized in this tier list in six different tiers. And uh, the most powerful ones are at the top, least powerful ones are at the bottom. And today we're going to be covering the bottom 39. Uh, so today I'll be explaining what those 39 Civics are and the reasons why they're in the bottom 39. Uh, now some of them are worse than nothing, and for those guys, I'll be explaining a lot more. So if you're a regular user of Barbaric Despoiler, this video may trigger you. Uh, but anyways, let's begin with the civics, and uh, by the way, if you want a 4k image, uh, there's one in the description. Alright, let's begin. Uh, these civics are a lot more boring than the other civics, and are overall just kind of meh. Uh, warrior culture is pretty damn good, but only if you actually have a use for entertainers. Uh, if you're playing with a normal empire, you don't really need to build any entertainer buildings until around year 40 or so. And so the first 40 years will be a complete waste for warrior culture. Uh, however, later on, uh, entertainment buildings can be used as very good unity producers, as well as, of course, amenity and naval cap producers. A duelist job actually produces the exact same amount of unity per pop as, you know, a culture worker job. And so in the end, you get a lot more bonuses for the same amount of unity, and basically, unity buildings are obsolete. Uh, this civic can also be combined with the Ecumenopolis, uh, in which case you plop the entertainment districts on, and you actually have five duelist jobs instead of the five culture worker jobs that are associated with it. Uh, this way you're going to get some pretty crazy amounts of naval cap from your Ecomonopoli, and you're certainly not going to regret it. Uh, trading post is boring, it provides you four extra star bases, which can be used for something like uh, extra docks, extra shipyards, etc. But eh. great updates, subsumed will, imperial cult, cutthroat politics. Uh, all these guys do is decrease the cost of edicts or increase the duration of them. Uh, so overall, they're kind of meh. They don't really matter too much. You do have to invest a lot of influence in edicts already to make these guys worth it. And even when you do get to the point where all the influence that you're spending is actually going on the edicts, they're only relatively okay. Uh, because at that point, there's really no good edicts left. Uh, next up we have Police State, it's meh, it does provide fast stability which is a nice 3% production bonus overall, uh, but the extra unity it provides from enforcers is really negligible. And if you're playing efficiently, enforcers are actually some of the pops you unemploy because crime isn't a significant problem uh, and the enforcers don't really produce enough to justify the use of a pop. Next up we have National Six Zeal, uh, it's certainly good if you're playing as a Rush Empire, it allows you to claim a lot more systems, uh, with a minus 10% to claim influence cost. And it also allows you to get weary of war a lot slower. Uh, next up we have Slaver Guilds and Indentured Assets. Good in theory, but in practice, awful. Past the first 20 years or so, uh, you're going to notice that you're really going to have a lack of specialist jobs. A solid 40% of your population is destined to go to the mines, and if you need any more of your population to not go to the mines, well, you can't do anything because the 40% pop ratio is set, and the only way you can remedy that is by, you know, giving up the Civic. Uh, with the Civic, you get a lot more raw resources that you normally would need, and uh, so in the end, you're probably going to have to end up selling it off or just keeping it in a stockpile, which is not entirely efficient. Uh, next up, we have Static Research and Natural Neural Network. Uh, these do the same thing. They increase your uh, tech options by one, and they're actually pretty decent if you're trying to gun for certain techs. Uh, they were a lot more powerful before when megastructures were actually good, and may actually become good again when megastructures are good again in an upcoming patch. To finish off B tier, we have Merchant Guilds. Uh, overall, this Civic is pretty decent. You get extra trade value from your rural pops, but you get less amenities and less unity production. Uh, it's a pretty decent trade-off you get. Uh, it's a pretty decent trade-off, and it's roughly equivalent. So if you value energy production, uh, so if you value energy production or consumer good production a lot more, because of course there's that policy that you can convert trade value into consumer goods, uh, go for it. But otherwise, it's kind of meh. And now we get to the C tier. Uh, some of the civics in here were good at some point in the past, but are now kind of meh. And uh, some of them can be used to create potential, but require a very, very specific build to achieve them. And so, let's start off with Life Seated. Now, initially, this may seem like a very enticing civic. Uh, after all, you get a size 25 Gaia with uh, special resources on it, and, uh, you know, just sounds pretty damn amazing. You know, who wouldn't want a Gaia of that size and of that scope of power? But in reality, by taking the Civic, you really are just shooting yourself in the foot. Colonizing other planets is a major pain in the ass, and you pretty much have to do it because, you know, otherwise you don't get enough growth and your empire doesn't spread quite nearly enough. Now, this can be remedied in some ways, 
uh, for example, creating colonies just for the pops to actually grow on them and just resettle them to your life seeded world, or you actually just raid other empires for those pops. Uh, but that is a very convoluted setup. I actually have a video on the setup, and uh, that is my aggressive tall build. You can check it out right here. But overall, without a specific build to it, it's meh. Get a significant head start from having the Gaia world, but the habitability at that point doesn't really matter because, you know, home worlds is always 100% habitability and the inability to effectively colonize other planets is a detriment. Now, I've always been an advocate of colonizing every single planet in your vicinity, uh, whether it's size 8 or zero habitability, but with Life Seated, it's taken to such an extreme degree that you actually start to feel the really, really negative impacts uh, from having a lot of extra consumer goods upkeep and uh, from having all your planets pretty much dedicated to amenity production. Uh, next up, we have franchising. Now, this may seem enticing at first, but in reality, uh, the minus admin cap that you get from branch offices is really not that strong. If you have something like 20 branch offices, you're only saving 10 admin cap, and uh, that is, you know, in the situation where you can actually get 20 branch offices. Uh, this situation usually comes around year 60 or so, because at the beginning of the game, you cannot afford the actual branch offices, and at that point, admin cap doesn't really matter too, too much. And in the end, you're better served by a different civic. Now, the thing with subjects is that it decreases the penalty from the subject having more fleet power than you, and while this may seem good on space, these situations virtually never happen, and disloyalty to the subject rarely translates into a revolt. Now, vassals as a whole are pretty much useless in high AA difficulty settings and in multiplayer games. Uh, in high AA difficulty settings, your vassals actually lose all their AI bonuses when they become your vassal, and so their economy is shit, and they're left unable to compete with you or other empires in terms of fleet power. Uh, in multiplayer games, people don't really like to play as vassals, and subject opinion doesn't matter a single bit because it's literally just a player making their own decisions unaffected by AI opinion. Uh, next up, we have a media conglomerate. It's pretty decent, it provides a 5% happiness bonus and uh, minus 5% to war exhaustion gain, but overall, its effects are pretty meh. The 5% happiness bonus only amounts to a 2% production bonus overall, and 2% is barely better than nothing, and so it's ranked the slow because the effect is this low. Uh, pool knowledge gives you extra leader cap and extra leader pool size, which really is kind of irrelevant. Uh, the extra leader level cap is kind of relevant until the late game, and the extra pool size is kind of meh overall. Uh, if you're lucky, it can provide you with some extra good leaders, but if you're at the point where you're looking for a leader to staff your fleet, for example, you're probably going to be hiring one at a time until you get the one that you need, and so pool knowledge, in effect, really doesn't do too much. And now, post-apocalyptic. Uh, this is a civic that has seen the light of SS tier before, uh, but in 2.2.6 it has been nerfed substantially, and the actual tomb world preference from your species has been removed. All you get is the survivor trait, which gives you 70% to tomb world survivability, and uh, 10 years extra lifespan. You're very unlikely to discover a sufficient amount of tomb worlds within your sector of space to actually justify the civic, and since it's locked to the start of the game, you cannot remove it for later use. And so, potentially, this is almost useless. Uh, next up we have Corby Systems and Free Haven. Our uh, Corby System decreases the resettlement cost and Free Haven increases migration traction. Migration overall only happens when there is a bad planet and pops from that bad planet are moving to a good planet. And there are only three situations where significant migration can actually happen. One is if you are bad at planet management. If you cannot manage your planets well and you have planets with significant amenities and housing problems, of course pops from there are going to move to better planets. The second option for increasing migration is to sign a migration treaty with another empire. Since we are talking about player empires and uh, high egg difficulty, uh, the planets that are going to have are likely going to be either good or even better than yours. And so if they're even better than yours, you're simply going to be losing migration. Uh, resettlement cost goes. Resettlement is really not an option that you use a lot in the game. Uh, you only really use it if you're playing with fanatic purifiers and you're just resettling pops to a separate world to purge. But even those situations are rather rare and uh, situational. Uh, next up we have Citizen Service. Uh, this civic grants soldiers extra unit production and also increases your naval capacity. Uh, this can only really be used in the later stages of the game where you have uh, fortified fortress worlds to actually defend your population. Uh, but with the balancing of the game, fortress worlds are overall kind of meh and are very, very situational because most of the time you can just either avoid them or just jump over them in the case of a late game encounter. Uh, the naval capacity that it provides is good though and is on par with naval contractors and subspace epiphase. Uh, next up we have Exalted Priesthood. It's not really useful in the early game, and uh, not really too too useful in the late game either. Uh, some of your rulers are replaced with high priests, uh, which give you extra unity at the cost of extra amenities. And since you're probably not going to be spamming temple buildings, 
uh, the extra unity that you get from priests is not going to be overly influential. And next up we have environmentalist. Uh, the 10% reduction to consumer goods is really not that powerful and so it's just kind of there in C tier. Uh, next up, shared burdens. Now this is actually one of the more interesting low tier civics that I've come across. Uh, on the face of it, it looks pretty decent. You have the shared burden uh, living standard which increases the happiness of all your pops and increases stability by 5. Also all your pops demote a bunch more rapidly. However, there's really not much use for any of this. Uh, the effect of spreading a minor bonus to happiness across all your pops is relatively minor and uh, it makes conquering other empires a little bit harder because you cannot simply implement your pops in the highest positions and uh, increase overall pop approval. No, you have to spread the pops around your empire and have to deal with them being low stability and high maintenance. Uh, also speaking of maintenance, uh, your pops overall consume a lot more consumer goods than they would in a normal empire unless you're running with mechanist or you're rushing really hard to get robots and droids. Uh, the only really good thing about the civic is the actual building that it provides. It upgrades your luxury building to a communal structure. You get housing with 5 housing and 3 amenities. Uh, these later upgrade to 10 housing and 6 amenities, and with all the bonuses from having your traditions, you get approximately 12. 12 housing is pretty good for a building slot, and uh, so in the late game you can have uh, very densely populated planets with no housing issues whatsoever. Uh, however, from my experience, housing isn't really a tremendous problem overall, and the negative impact of it actually caps at minus 20 stability. You can still build robots, you can still grow pops, but your planet is technically overcrowded. Uh, next up, factory overclocking. This gives you an extra leader level cap and 10% extra leader level speed. 10% really doesn't amount to too much, and the extra leader cap really only applies later on. And now, the fun part. The D tier. The worst of the worst. Hands down, these are the worst civics in the game, and overall you should just choose to avoid these guys. The three highlights of this tier are Barbaric Despoiler, Criminal Heritage, and Feudal Realm. Now, Barbaric Despoilers may not be too bad on Commodore difficulty with dumb AI, but when you're facing off against players or AI that is significantly more powerful, it is a heavy, heavy detriment. Barbaric Despoilers is a locked civic. You cannot choose to remove it after the start of the game, and the only really unique thing it provides is the Causes Belly that can be used against any empire. Uh, this Causes Belly allows you to declare war on any empire, and steals minerals and energy if the empire that you're going to war with loses. However, these are scaled extremely poorly. I think you need around 100 planets to have a 5,000 uh, mineral and energy bounty. You allow an AI to spread to 100 planets. Uh, uh, the rating bombardment stance that comes with the Civic doesn't really synergize well uh, with the actual Causes Belly. Uh, that is because empires are pretty likely to just straight up surrender to you, and if they're players, eh, yeah, they will surrender to you and just be like, okay, thank you. 10 years of truce, you can't attack me now. Or alternatively, they'll just go to war and wipe you because you get no combat bonuses and you get a minus 100 opinion malice from pretty much everyone. Either way, it's quite terrible and you're going to be unable to have healthy relations with any other normal empire without all the bonuses associated with, you know, other genocidal ways of playing, such as Phonetic Purifiers, Devouring Swarm, and Determined Exterminator, all of which are at the top of the list. Uh, I personally was very excited for Criminal Heritage when Megacorp just came out, but in practice, it is quite terrible. You do get to annoy other empires with it, but they very rapidly just build enforcement buildings and just shut you down. Even though the AI has been quote unquote fixed to not go all crazy with enforcement buildings, uh, getting a good level of crime on AI planets is actually really tough. And uh, if you're trying to do this against a player, well, you got a war coming. Uh, because the Civic does not allow normal commercial packs and normal branch offices, uh, in the end you get a lot less branch offices overall, and uh, those that you do are at a constant risk of being shut down. Uh, overall, as a Megacorp, you may choose to follow the strategy of becoming a normal empire later on. Uh, that is because a Megacorp has a very powerful head start, it has more pops than a normal empire, and it also has access to private prospectors. Uh, after a while though, its civics aren't really that powerful, and uh, unless you build up a lot of branch offices, you're not really going to be able to compete with a normal empire with something like Technocracy. Uh, therefore, you may choose to later transition to a normal empire, but with criminal heritage, you cannot. Uh, because it's a Megacorp exclusive civic, and you cannot remove it past the start of the game, you actually cannot reform your government to anything other than a megacorp, and so in the end, it does hurt you significantly. Uh, next up, Feudal Realm. Uh, the principles by which this is bad are in the same level as franchising, uh, but all you get is a subject opinion modifier and uh, the ability of your subjects to actually build star bases. Uh, in the end, this is pretty annoying because uh, you really don't want your vassals actually, you know, expanding and such, because you want yourself to expand and such. Because if it's AI, it's gonna lose all its difficulty bonuses and is going to be incompetent. And you could also just very easily imitate the 
best case scenario use of this civic by just building an outpost yourself and just gifting it to your vassal. Next up, Shadow Council. It's the greatest single modifier to cost in the entire game, but it's the most useless civic in the entire game. If you're playing as a democracy, all the leaders last about 10 years, and so uh, trying to influence every single election is not viable. In an oligarchy, you're probably better off just choosing a random leader, and uh, the same thing applies to dictatorships. Uh, strength of Legions, Private Military Companies, and Warbots are another set of bad ones. Uh, they give extra army damage and reduced army upkeep, but in reality, armies are just so insignificant that this modifier doesn't really matter. A really, really minor and significant bonus. It gives you a maximum of 2% production if all the pops on your planet are set as in pops, and 2% is virtually nothing. Uh, next up we have Delegated Functions. It decreases leader upkeep and increases leader pool size. Leader pool size, as I mentioned before, it doesn't really matter, and uh, leader upkeep is quite insignificant unless you run into very, very high admin cap problems, in which case, and you're going that much over admin cap, surely you're producing enough energy to cover your leaders. Uh, next up we have Philosopher King. Uh, this civic is virtually useless because uh, your leader generally doesn't live that long and uh, doesn't live enough to actually benefit from Philosopher King bonuses, uh, but in the case they do, there's a green arrow that this gets better over time, and if you have an immortal leader of some sort, yeah, sure. But you're not getting those benefits for 100 years or so of actual gameplay. And to finish this all off, we have Zero Waste Protocols, which decreases robot upkeep by 10%. Uh, but since you're playing as a machine empire, all this decreases is energy consumption, and the effects of it are meh overall. Uh, but anyways, that's gonna be it for today's comprehensive tier list. But anyways, that's gonna be it for today. Uh, stuff like this I usually post on my Discord before I actually make a video about. Uh, so join my Discord if you want early access to content like this. And you can also donate to my Patreon if you support works like this, which take a week to create and uh, a lot of trial and error. Uh, but anyways, that's going to be it for today. Uh, the next video of the Paradox Empire is going to be coming out within a couple days. And uh, of course, I'll see you guys there. Please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more, and bye-bye. Uh,